drama. It was my first color picture. So that's why. Amazing. Martine was telling us that she would normally be listening to music right now this morning, right, Martine? That she's a fan of jazz and hip hop. Yeah. I wish I could put uh, David Murray right in this minute, but you said it's impossible with the kind of thing you are doing now. Because you can't hear. <laughs> you can't hear. Right, right, right. So maybe it could be good. No. We'll, we'll, tell every, we'll tell everybody to go listen to David Murray when they finish, when we finish the Zoom this morning. Too. Yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> so I think um, maybe we'll get started. It's 11.05 and then as people join in, they can just join in and that'll be yeah. fine. Which kind of people is it? Did it's you... all kinds of people, all kinds of people. Some are people, um, right now who have bought some of your photographs from the show and want to learn more about you and some are are writers and artists so let's start martine so um the exhibition of works that we have up in the gallery here we selected a sort of uh like greatest hits right would you say that's accurate uh, i think i'm happy because you were the one with chuck to decide which picture. I didn't get involved because it was too much headache for me. So <laughs> thank you that the two of you did it. That's for sure. <laughs> so Martine, let's start by telling, um, Martine was telling me how she originally got to photography. So maybe you could tell us that story again. You were saying that your, your film camera was stolen from you. Yes. Uh, it was uh, Félix Guattari and Deleuze, two incredible philosophers who, was, who wrote incredible book. One of them that I love is called Capitalism and Schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> two fantastic guys. And I told them I was dreaming to do video. I was a dancer before, but I decided I want to do video. So those two philosophers got me a video. And after six years of working with the gangs, I come home, I was a barmaid in a jazz club. I come home and the, 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 the video, all the equipment was stolen. So of course, downstairs in my building, they say, you see, you see, the gang come every day, they came and stole the video. I say, this is crazy. The gang is sad like me because we lost the video. So after a few days, I found out that the man next door stole the video and sold it. So I couldn't get the video anymore. So I was very, very sad. Can you imagine to be stopped because somebody takes your instrument? That group of stupid people next door, the family stealing my camera because the, the guy was a junkie at that time. Now he, he, he doesn't talk about it. Terrible. Uh, and uh, so... At the door, knock at the door, Pearl, who was the president of the gang called the Roman Kings and the vice president and other guy, they knock at my door and what they have in their hand, a beautiful present. And the present was a camera, photography camera. They say, we can't get a video, but we got that. So now you have to start to do photography. So I started photography because the gang members decided I should do photography since I can't do video anymore. And they mm -hmm. bought it for me with their money. And I was very, very touched, very touched. So I used Amazing. to do big photography and I used to glue them next to each other and like a book, like the movement. And when I had the show at the Whitney Museum, the gang came to help the curator, who was a very nice man, and they had many ideas how to put my photography on the wall. And the black and white were on the wall at the Whitney during the show. And uh, one of the gang members said, there is no space on the wall now. Let's put all those things on the floor. So they were long things like that. Can they see my hand or not? Yeah, we can. We can. Yeah. So what, uh, it's like uh, books that you open, 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 open. Accordion. Yeah, accordion. So it was all the way along the room where I had the show. So people could look from 
like that, down. So yeah. that was my first photography of the South Bronx. We, Amazing. And sometimes it would go with me when I was taking the picture because we were lost without the video. And so right now, this this picture, Martine, that we're looking at is in the South Bronx. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? It was a communion. She was. I just was walking in the street, and who I see, an apparition. This beautiful communion. She was coming out of the church, and she was very beautiful. I was impressed by her beauty, and the contrast between the back, the floor. Uh, beautiful little white shoes. It was so beautiful, that woman. Young woman. I love, she was I love so her little white shoes. I think that's what makes the picture. They're so pristine and there's so much love and care. Yeah, um, really. And the socks, you know, oh, it was beautiful. And she was smiling. Oh. And tell us, so you picked up, just before we started the talk, you picked up a photograph and you said, this is the first color photograph that I took. In our show, we have this piece, which is the only color photograph in the show. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, Gordon Park, who I adore because of his work and because the man he was, when he saw that picture, he said, I wish I'd taken that picture. And I was <laughs> that we will stay forever because he loves that picture, that little boy in his own world. And uh, I think David Murray did a, gave a very good title to that picture. I don't remember. You remember which title David Murray gave to that picture? Uh, I can, we'll look it up. The two we'll musicians who give title to my work are Arnett Coleman and David Murray. I have yes, so you were saying, you told me you never title your own work, that they always title it for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, I found it very boring. Those photographers who are next to the wall, they say, a man in the water. You can't <laughs> see that the man is in the water, you know? And they, have, they feel they have to describe where is the picture. It goes on my nerve. So I don't want yeah. to stupid title. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see. So this is a collection, you were telling me the woman on the left, this has been one of the, the favorite, most loved photographs in the show. Her name is Love. And yeah. for years, you, you photographed this place, the Rhythm Club. So can you tell us a little bit about Love and the Rhythm Club? Uh, she would come to the Rhythm Club to borrow money from the guys, and she was very loved. She was allowed to go in the club, and sit there and laugh with the guys. And it was, I love her. I took pictures of her for years, years, years. I have a big collection of love photography. And this day, she was doing her makeup in the mirror of a car, ready to go upstairs to the club. So I remember that moment. And she was very well dressed, but she wanted to put her lipstick, her eyebrow, and all that. I love it. And there's so much happiness. I mean, you were talking about sharing joy that right now, you know, a lot of the artwork that we're looking at, we want to share a sense of joy. And yeah. I think in, in all of your pieces, tell us a little bit about that, because often, you know, there, there are difficult situations, right? It's, you know, gangs and poverty. And, um, but, but what we see when we look at your pictures is a lot of love and happiness and, and kind of mutual respect. That's where, what I'm interested to show because we have to continue to love each other. And in the gang, I found a lot of love between each other. A lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in so, the, world, the same thing. Look, this picture, yes. that was Carlos. He was uh, very tired and his father said, you can't stop. You have to keep on. You are going to win. That was during a fight. And the father was pushing him to keep on. And so how did you get to photographing um, the boxers? Because for some of the people in the talk might not know, a, a, one of the major series in Martine's work are these, it's a community of boxers. Um, so tell us a little bit about these guys. Uh, one day I was in Harlem and a girl come to me and say, can you come and take picture of me uh, so I, I can put it on my poster? So. 
I went with her to a gym and the first child I saw was the one you just saw before, Carlos. He has a, there is another picture where he has a mouthpiece too big for him because the father could not afford to pay for the mouthpiece of his size. People are very, very courageous in that world of children. And the, mm. the, the, the trainer are like parents to them. After the fight, they always bring food and party with them. It's, very, it's a very touching world and very, very hard. And I found a lot of love between trainer and kids. And that's what I'm interested to share with people. A kind of mentorship, right? Like love and, and yeah. mentorship and guidance. Yeah, yeah. And this guy was waiting for his fight for hours. Sometimes they have to wait for the fight. Sometimes they lay down. Sometimes they sit like that for hours for their, for their fight. And the one and now, is in Cuba. Uh, with an incredible fighter that I went to visit in Cuba, Kit Chocolate. He was uh, when the old, old uh, fighter from Harlem and Bronx and everywhere, Brooklyn, were my friend and they were telling me about Kit Chocolate with such uh, admiration. They had to put on him white glove because he was punching so fast that you couldn't see how he was punching. So his reputation was white gloves so we can see how you are punching. <laughs> <laughs> and one day I was at his house in Cuba and he said, can you take picture of my grandson in front of my picture? So I took that picture, ordered by Kid Chocolate with his son. Uh, sorry, my computer is behaving erratically, but so these two, yes. you, you did, Martine, you did a, quite a few photographs in Cuba. Tell us a little bit about when you went there and, and what drew you there. I was there several times. One time I was sent by Liberation, the French newspaper I used to work for a lot. And mm -hmm. they sent me to do the first fashion show of Cuba. But that was not my goal. I wanted to go <laughs> and find the kid chocolate, the fashion show, okay, I will do it because it's a job. But I was, the first night I kept walking in, in the city and suddenly I see, I lift my eyes and I see guys sitting through the window, first floor. And they were feeling like uh, kind of fighters because you know, fighters hold their shoulder and their body differently. So I go mm. upstairs and I asked those guys playing cards, can you help me to find Kid Chocolat? And one guy get up and he say, that's my best friend. I take you there right away. So that's how I end up seeing Kid Chocolat because I was in that little place where they were playing cards and the guy took me right away to Kid Chocolat, who was an incredible man, incredible. Martine, I'm, I'm sure I know part of the answer to this, but as a woman, I'm thinking of you being, you know, surrounded by these very powerful men. A lot of women would be, especially in the 70s and 80s, would have been told you should be scared. You should be scared to be hanging out with these gangs. You should be scared to go to Cuba and look for you know, you're in a park and some guy says to you, Martine, come with me, I'm going to take you to meet. So tell us a little bit about that, about yourself as, as a brave, independent woman, um, kind of seeking out these opportunities. But I did what I felt like doing. Why should I be scared of what? What? <laughs> Maybe if I go around Trump, I would be scared. That's for sure. But around the gang and the boxer, no way. I was very happy. I got a lot of love. I could give a lot of love. I learned to do photography a very special way with the trainer and the boxer. I learned to be transparent. That's what the trainer loved me for that. Because I was not trying to attract the, the eyes of the fighter, not at all. I learned to be totally transparent so I would not disturb the training. And that's why I became very close friend to some of the trainers. Yeah, I was there for six years. 
every day with those fighters. Yeah, and, and the children touch me so much, so much. I think something that something else that comes across very clearly in your work, you know, you mentioned love and and respect and now transparency. The idea that you're not you're not a voyeur on these bodies on these com communities like physically on the bodies but also on the communities you have become part of these families right you i'm part of them that's it it's my families when i go to those parties all summer long i went to parties and i got so many hugging that you can't imagine because so many years in harlem 30 35 years i think i've been in harlem so when I go to a big party, they, they had many parties, there's always somebody who knows me and hug me. So I, if I'm depressed downtown, I just have to take the subway, go uptown and get my hug. That's yeah. simple. Because <laughs> I love my the there. They love to have fun. Tell us about, well, tell us about this picture first. I think this is such a captivating photo. I think it's uh, one of my best, best pictures at the moment with that old man. I think he was telling me everything through his eyes and the way he was standing. I was very, very moved by that old man. Very respectful to him. Very, very. He was in front of a church. Yeah. His picture. That man, if people want to feel something, just stay in front of that man and understand what's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to go on like that because maybe it's mm -hmm. not the moment. Okay, yeah. and this, we were talking earlier a little bit about the dominoes and the cards and the plane. Uh, park where I'm still going, this picture, I'm still going to that same park. And that man was very, had beautiful hands and passionate with his domino. Yeah, and very well dressed always it's a competition of who is dressed they, they change every day to show up and yeah. i wanted i want to hear a little bit about your relationship to fashion because i think in your pictures you know you see these incredible uh personalities coming out oftentimes through fashion right through and I think in a formal way, they come out in the way the patterns, like in this piece, the way the pattern of his jacket relates to the pattern of, you know, the wrinkles on his hands relating to the pattern of the dominoes. Um, but I know that you also had a more, uh, a relationship to the fashion world, to fashion designers, to photographing. You just mentioned working for the newspaper. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. I mean, you know, the, the this clothing picture, in this piece speaks world, but if you put this picture, uh, okay, so you are see, showing that yeah. now. Which which one do you want to see? This one or the dominoes? Uh, I think it's a domino because this one is a very deep story, and it's the best picture I ever took in my life. And okay, so let's the story of let's do this one, and then we'll talk about the other one separate. Okay. Uh, I did work for Saint Laurent a lot, doing photography, and he gave me the money to do a movie called uh, Woman is Sweeter. He told the people who were giving him money, I don't remember the name of those people who were behind Saint Laurent at that time. He told them, give her the money so she can do what she wants. So I did a movie about him, and the music was made by Gold McDermott, who did the music of hair. And in the movie, he's singing, Woman is Sweeter. So the name of the Saint Laurent movie is Woman is Sweeter, because Gold McDermott sing in it and say that. And then I did a lot of photography for Saint Laurent, and he was my biggest collector. So each time I would go to Paris, I show him Harlem, he takes pictures. I think he has like uh, 177 pictures or something. Saint Laurent in his collection. What do you think he loved so much about, about Harlem, about these pictures? Like what, what do you think attracted him? I think he was moved, very deeply moved by the, the beauty of the people. Yeah, yeah. That's what he, he was moved by the, 
I, th I think this is a good this is a good piece to connect to that because I know how personal and intimate you know I mean we know that just from looking at the image but then when you told me the background I think it would be a fantastic thing for you to tell us about this picture this picture is a picture I love the most that I have done in my life I remember that moment and I still get the chill because she was a great, great singer. And she was singing in a club called the, yeah, I can't remember. That. She was singing a beautiful love story. And her husband was accompanying her on the piano. And suddenly he's sitting at the moment of the deepest part of the love story in the song and he fell and died. So you can imagine. And then two weeks after about, her best friend came to the club and holds the wife of his best friend like that. She was so fragile after she lost her husband. So that was the best friend of her husband. He was a saxophone player. And I, I was so moved the way he was holding her. You know, she was so fragile after the death of her husband. Martine, do you think the way your background as a dancer influences the way you see bodies? I know you've mentioned that a few times, like that you knew these were boxers because of the way they held their shoulders. And even looking at this piece, I think so much of this piece is about him, you know, the way he's grasping her hand and, and the kind of fragility of her fingers. How do you think your background as a dancer has come across in, in these images? Maybe it was a question. How can I? <laughs> I you have been dancing? Yeah, you asked yeah. a question. Oh, I was a dancer before, when I came to New York. La Mama, who had two yeah. theaters, she was a great black woman, incredible woman. And she saw me dancing in a show in Edinburgh. I was dancing with the Pink Floyd and the Soft Machine. And she came in the background, in the, what you say, when you are finished to Backstage, yeah. Backstage, and she said, girl, one day I'm going to send you a ticket. I want you in my theater. And two years after, I opened the envelope and I have a ticket. <laughs> That's how I came to New York in 76, uh, 68, after the revolution in France. Right. June 68, right, right. I got my ticket and came to New York and never left because 68 was fantastic in New York. The first word was not money. It was creating poetry, music, mm -hmm. photography, painting. Everybody was into art and it, it, it has nothing to do with New York now. New York now is money. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Very few artists can survive now. Oh, this is going to church. I love I love <laughs> and the fashion, I mean again this piece is about fashion, you know. It's I, I for me it's about the way we tell the world who we are, um, yeah. how we carry ourselves and uh it's just timeless, you know, the, the sort of dignity and grace of these women oh, is just I love them. I love them. And the tailleur, you look the, the the way they hold their feet, oh, I love them, I love them. I remember that moment when I used to go to church. At the beginning, I used to go to church every Sunday because I was mm. a lot, and I would come out and see them. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And this, and this piece. She, she was wonderful. Her two parents died of AIDS and after that, I could never be in touch with her because she was put in an awful nut. But she was very, very nice. When I had a show at the French Embassy, she came and posed this way in front of her picture, I remember. Huh. Yeah, exactly yeah. the wow. same. In yeah. front of her picture yeah. at the French Embassy, she stand like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was a wonderful child, wonderful, full of creation and love. Yeah. I wish I could be in touch. That's uh, Kid Chocolate showing his picture when he was young. Yeah. yeah. Under his bed was, were hundreds of pictures of him 
and he said, take them with you to New York. I, they are dying under my bed. But I felt dishonest to take those pictures because I thought those pictures should be in a museum in Cuba, not with me. I felt dishonest to take them. So I think I took one he, took, he gave me, but that's it. I couldn't do that. But probably Cuba didn't have the money to do it. Yeah. And here, and then, yeah. here he asked me to take picture of his grandson in front of his picture that he had on his wall. Yeah. Fantastic. And the grandson was, that's in Cuba. This is one of my favorite pictures, Martine. I love this piece. <laughs> in Cuba, the children had no toys, no plastic bag, nothing like that. So one day I meet one of the ch children. He had made his costume for a party. So we went and walked together. I was very proud to walk with him like that. Can you imagine? I wanted him to make me a costume like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And I mean, I think again, it's so many of the things that we love about your pictures. It's, it's the love and the dignity, but also the sense of movement in this body and the way we feel his kind of just like happiness and joy walking down the street, like having put this thing together. It's just so, it's fantastic. But you meet so many beautiful people, you have to show them, no? Yeah. We are not about sadness, especially in a moment like that. We have to celebrate life. And but you know, Martin, I think it's your love of the people that, that we're responding to. I mean, this is, it's, it's a gift and it's your talent that you are able to translate that because unfortunately many people don't walk through the world with this lens of love and respect you know um and i think when we look at your pictures we're reminded you know we're reminded that we should or to not forget to this is the image of love that we were looking at earlier tell us about this piece Oh, she was a dear friend of mine. Now the name all along. Mabel. Mabel Albert. Thank you, Chuck. You see, he knows everything of my picture. Everything. So that's Mabel Albert. She, I took a lot of pictures of her, and she used to sing love songs all the time. She was so wonderful, wonderful. And she had that dress. I remember that dark green dress. And she had all kind of beautiful shoes. She was loved by the musician, loved. 93, right? Yeah, she was so beautiful. That's in 93. No, how old she was. Oh, yeah, she was yeah, 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 yeah. 90. She was fantastic. And she had many different wigs. I wish I had her <laughs> wigs today. <laughs> <laughs> you like my wig? I love it. I oh. love it. <laughs> We're twins. We're twins today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Martine, tell us about this one. This one feels a little bit different to me than oh, some of yeah. the other photographs. Dear, dear friend, I'm going to show you things I've done for him. Yeah. Every year since he died, I do a poster that I put on the wall. You see? Yes. To remember him because he was very, very loved on 141st Street. So I would do that. And I have other ones, the big one we can show. Yeah. He used to cut the hair of the little people who had no money, the men who didn't have no money. He was always there to cut the hair. And when he was not cutting hair, he would play saxophone. And in the 50, he was at Carnegie Hall where he played saxophone. Ahead, I then. think you can see all the picture I put. That's one yes. poster. I have a collection of posters I did for him because he died in 2005. Yeah, and he was very, very proud that he was at Carnegie Hall in the 50s. Mm. So that's why I always use that picture of him. Mm. We had a lot of fun with him. And all the, the little old lady drinking their little thing and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it was a big salon. Yeah. Salon. <laughs> salon of old grandmother, the guys who wanted to have a good time smoking a joint, and friends, 
it was wonderful, a beautiful place. So every year I make sure on the 14th of September he gets his poster so we can remember him. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah really. Oh, this is in the South Bronx. Yeah, the little girl dancing. I have a lot of her. In the whole series of her. Right. I don't know. I think I have them, but you know. I loved what you said about music being so important to you because I think that comes across in so many of these images, you know. So that was a little girl, hip hop, you know, I was in the South Bronx when hip hop started. So I, people were dancing, there is another one here on my table, you see the boy dancing, no, just, yeah, this one, yeah. You see, another one. I have many, many. Well, can you bring it closer, Martin? Up, 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 up a little higher, yeah. Can you see? Yeah. yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Shall I put it up? That's fantastic, thank you. That's hip hop. So I was in the hip hop, and I was with the gangs, uh, working with them. I mean, from those gangs, uh, time I have a hundred three hours of video that were never seen. Only they were seen at the Whitney Museum, and Bertolucci took me to Rome, and they show it on television, uh, prime time several times. The two video of the gang. Mm -hmm. One is uh, Vicky. She was the president of the Roman Queens, and the other one is a trial of the Roman Kings. So those videotapes were translated in Italy and shown several times. Bertolucci mm. was crazy of my work. Yeah, I miss him. I miss him a lot. So this one is so formal, you know, it feels, it feels different. It's such a formal gesture. It's so sweet and tender, but also um, more rigid. Tell us about this one. Uh, I met them in the subway one evening and they told me they were going to get married the next day. So they invited me and I went to the wedding. <laughs> voilà. He was going to the war the next day. Yeah, yeah, that was the time of probably. And this is a block party on 138, I remember. That was the best picture of life magazine. But I, I look like I'm bragging a little too much. Bertolucci no, no, no. and this. Is no, no, no. <laughs> no, tell us, Martina, it's important for us to know. It's important to know. It's okay. So this was, uh, you said this was in Life magazine. Yeah, the best. It's in the book of Life magazine. I'm very proud of it. So I show up. A wonderful, wonderful image. I was very moved by the people dancing and one of the father holding his baby in that picture, yeah. I love this father with his baby. Uh, He's so fantastic. Yeah, one father, yeah. And you see the fashion of that time and the speaker. Now the speaker is not the same. I mean, you see the clothes are different. Everything is different, yeah. And it was a big block party, and those block parties used to go on until three, four o'clock in the morning. But now the police come at 6.30 and tell them to go home. And all the street is full of food. The food is free for everybody when they do a block party. And the police come and say, move out, get out. The party is finished, 6.30, when we start to dance, the kids are having a good time. People are happy to eat together. The grandmother, blah, 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 they are sitting on their chair. We say, drink. And the police. So I had a friend one time, uh, Jersey. She was so upset about the five car of police trying to stop us to have a good time. She put her ass in the police car and said, You want to, uh, to arrest me because I put my ass on your car? <laughs> The police was so surprised, they didn't do anything. They just <laughs> waited for her to get out of the car and kept continuing. But that was a very good historical moment in my head, yeah. how she didn't want the police to stop for people to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. it's stupid. 
So the past was more beautiful. But you know, now the new people are moving and taking over Harlem and they don't like the noise of the block party. So I feel like, why do you come to Harlem if you don't like music, you know? Oh, this was a job I did, a fashion job, yeah. Uh, Max tell, tell us about this one. Uh, Max Mara gave me a job for the bus stop. You have those pictures of the bus stop and the, the bus? No. No. I don't have that one. No, we should have think about it. I will send them to you when I get an assistant. Uh, those pictures, I had to take a picture for the bus and for the bus stop because they were going to open their shop in New York, Max Mara. So I was, I decided those kids have never been to the beach, let's go to the beach. And I had a chauffeur, food, and we went to the beach. They had never been to the beach and we had a good time. And at the end of the day, I said, now we have to work. So <laughs> I did those pictures with them. I have a big collection of, of those kids with a coat, but that's the one they picked up. Yeah. I love it. it I fun. love it. Martina, I want to ask you one more question and then, you know, I think we'll have taken up enough of your time this morning. But my question is how, you know, obviously you, you've talked about how these communities have changed, but how have you seen some of the, the positive aspects of what you've captured stay the same, despite not just our current moment, but kind of the changes in New York, you know, like you said, okay, the block parties in Harlem get shut down. Yeah, That's but the love, the love between people still exists, exists, exists. All summer long, I've been going with people, of course, and what is important is to feel the love between each other. I have beautiful video where people are talking about that. Mm. Yeah, it's still Fantastic. the love Fantastic. and the pleasure to be together. I have a video I'm thinking about, but it's. I can't put it on, but I would have yeah. loved to put that video I took last week where guys are saying, we really love each other. That's why we are here together. And he says awesome. that. Well, I think that's the, that's the best possible note to end on. Martine, thank you so much for sharing this with us, for taking the time this morning and for getting on Zoom, which I know is not the most comfortable environment. <laughs> You are beauty. That's a good sign. Oh, you must have all these guys out there, you know? Yeah. Ooh, la, 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 la. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here for the compliments this morning. I'll take them. No, Martine, thank you so much. It means the world to us. And, and I'm loving sharing this work with so many people that are responding so well to it, particularly in a, in a very crazy world where we need to be reminded that we do love each other. So we have, thank we have, you. We have to celebrate life. That's it. Absolutely. We go into a depression because that president. No way. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you Martine. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Thank and you, you too. <laughs> thank you. That's finished now. That's finished now. Yeah. I wanted to uh, check to be in the image, but he didn't want. Yep. It. Yeah, that, that was.